Good afternoon, everybody. I can see you're all joining me for the three o'clock session um, at this STA virtual online webinar that you've been enjoying all day. Um, and your last hour today with me before you go and see Mike Goody is on online delivery. So welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm just letting everybody log on, see how many people we've got joining us. Feel free to turn your um, camera on if you'd like to give me a wave. I'm so used to on these webinars, you're not being able to interact maybe as much as today. Um, but I know you're shy, like no one's got their cameras on, you're just all hiding in the background. <laughs> Never mind. There we go. Sarah's come say hello and Kelly. There we go. It's fine. I like to see your faces. You don't have to put your cameras on, but you know, I've got my camera on. You can put your camera on as well. And um, if you want to hit the chat and say hello, this is an interactive session. So be prepared um to get involved you're not going to be sat there doing anything um i've got to remit the sta asked me to come on and do online delivery of you but basically my remit is is to have as much fun as possible together for the last hour hour of your conference with a speaker so this next hour is all about us having fun together it's as plain and simple as that if you're joining on the catch-up that's available for 28 days you might be regretting it right now and wishing that you joined live you'd be correct um, but we'll sort you out with something as well. So we've got people on the chat. Helen's saying that her camera's on, but for some reason it isn't showing me great use of the technology there, Helen. Kelly's saying hi to everybody. You are a quiet bunch. Very quiet. You've had such a busy day. Um, maybe you might fall asleep. I hope not. Um, good stuff. OK, we will get going because I think we've probably got everybody now. You can keep writing in the chat if you want to. OK, so just a little bit about me. Um, I'm Lynn, if you've not worked out already. Um, I'm an STA train the tutor. So I train the tutors um, who then uh, train the swimming teachers, for example. Um, I'm also the Circo Leisure National Aquatic Training Lead, um, a new role for me and a new role in Circo Leisure. Um, I'm a Nearpod certified educator, um, which is all to do with online training. Um, I also own the swim surgery which is also an STA approved training centre. So we run qualifications and staff training. And believe it or not, if you've not worked already, I've got a special interest in ed tech, which we're covering today since February 2020 um, when COVID hit um, for maybe obvious reasons. If you'd said to me in January 2020, Lynn, in 18 months time, two years time, you'll be really passionate about online learning. If I'm honest with you, which I am being, um, I would have laughed at you. I would have said, absolutely not. I love delivering in a classroom. I go to lots of swim schools. I go to lots of operators, do lots of staff training, do lots of qualifications. And I love being in the classroom. But needs must when a pandem pandemic hits. And it changed my whole opinion about learning. And I'm still really passionate about being in a room with people. But now I really see the benefits of online learning and how that's going to work together also. Um, and that's what today is all about. OK, so what's happened in the last 18 months? So it has been quite an 18 months, especially when it comes to online delivery. I wholly believe that we only make big strides forward in um, medicine and education when a crisis hits. And that's exactly as we know what's happened with COVID. And during that time, education has made big steps forward in this country. We were a little bit behind um, with regards to online delivery behind places like America and China who have been doing it and doing it very well for a, quite a long time now. And we're starting to catch up. That's no different for the STA. Um, courses hadn't really been delivered online before for the STA. And now this is common practice and the same with staff training also. We took a little bit of a punt with moving online. I had a course that was already running. We got completely shut down and I asked the STA if I could have a go at moving that online. We did. Um, so we had those learners who had experience being in the classroom and then switched to being online. And we gathered lots and lots and lots of feedback from them, really drilled down into their thoughts and feelings about the online delivery. And really, it was their feedback that changed my opinion and started making me quite passionate about this. When I look back at that first course now, it was literally what we're doing right now. It was me talking to the camera and a PowerPoint. 
That was all we had going on. We didn't even have the chat functions um, that Zoom and other systems have now where you could interact. So it was very, very basic. But despite that, what the learners were saying is, it's the same as being in a classroom. I loved being in my own home, et cetera, et cetera. The way we're delivering now is completely different. We've made big strides forward in that. The technology has taken us there as well. People like Zoom and Nearpod and um, Google have really invested in online systems and games and applications to really enhance online learning. And that's made a big difference. And the way we deliver now, the way the tutors are delivering now online is completely different to that. And without doubt, so much better. But the point being is, is when we delivered in that very simple, basic way, the learners found it useful, they did learn, they enjoyed it, and they said those comments such as, it's no different than being in the classroom. Okay, so it gave us that spur. So de online delivery is not the future. I say this all the time. It's the here and now. I'm really lucky that I was offered an amazing opportunity at Circo Leisure um, to go and head up their training for aquatics. And one of the reasons I took that job was they were willing to go there. A lot of the operators are falling back to face to face delivery, whether they're doing staff training or qualifications. And Circo Leisure have really allowed me to um, use the technology and we do do face to face, but we're using technology. Only this week I was in front of the contract uh, managers with my team um, and Helen, who's actually on here, and my manager and I were presenting to the contract managers and we were using the technology face to face in the classroom with them. And how their opinion, having never really done that training before, changed in the space of five minutes with some of the activities that we're going to use today was really um, quite impressive to see. In actual fact, Helen, as you're on here, um, would you be able to turn your mic on? Maybe you'd just be able to give a bit of colour to that and bring that to life as to <laughs> what happened in the room. Yeah, it, it was really park as always. It was really brilliant, I've got to say. Um, the topic of the meeting that we're in was quite heavy. Um, it was a really serious atmosphere. All our senior people within the business, um, Lynn starts this interactive online session and we're asking the MD um, and other SLT to just get involved with this interactive activities. Their first response was sheer panic, wasn't it, Lynn? <laughs> that just that drain on their face of, oh my goodness, what am I being dragged into? And <laughs> honestly, within two minutes, the, the competitiveness amongst all these senior people was like something I've never, ever seen before, where they were doing these activities, working together as a team. Um, the competitiveness came out in them, didn't it, Lynn? Yeah, um, it And it completely transformed the feel um, of the room. Um, it went from me and Lynn standing at the front presenting to suddenly everyone attending the meeting was involved in the meeting and we brought them into it um yeah it was like something I've never seen before it was incredible yeah it was really good and these were very serious people um and the main aim was is they actually learned they were learning what we wanted to teach them about which was our aquatic strategy for next year um so yes very serious people in the room but even with them it completely um sort of turned them around and we got fantastic feedback as a result so it's not the future this here and now and anything that we're doing today that quite obviously we are doing online can be moved into the classroom so that example um, was one of the first times that we'd use some of this technology today in the classroom so we were in a conference room they all had their laptops with them so they could use that to do the interaction and they were in the classroom with us with the powerpoint up on the board as well so it was really blending the two together one of my tutors nicole and um, martin did that for the first time a couple of months ago on a qualification blended the two together um, and that was actually the first time um, i'd done it um, was this week so without further ado let's leave this bit of behind because i promised you fun and that's what we're going to have for now 50 minutes and we're going to leave the powerpoint behind and we're going to go over to use nearpod which is just one of the systems i honestly now with how much i 
know and use with these I could do I was working out this morning probably a one day maybe I will do at some point a one day training a one day webinar on all of the different systems out there and there's benefits of all of them and I use all of them I can only show you a few today and possibly some of the favorites the overriding one is Nearpod um, which kind of brings everything else in together Um, but we're gonna jump on there We're going to use some of the activities um, and hopefully um, you're going to have a lot of fun um, in the next part of this presentation. So I'm just checking how many people we have. We don't need that. So to go to Nearpod, all you need to do is go to nearpod.com so you can open another tab on your computer. If you're on the computer, you could grab your mobile um, and open a tab on there. Don't worry if you're on your um, mobile using the app, you can just you won't be able to see my face anymore. Anyone else's. But that will be a bonus. You need to go to nearpod.com, ask to join a lesson. It says about joining a lesson on there and just pick because we've got quite a few people. Just pick one of those two codes to enter. It will ask you for a code. Doesn't matter which of the two. I'm just splitting you into into two groups, basically, um, so that Nearpod can handle the vast numbers we've got online today. Jeremy's going to run one of the sessions for me as my tech guy in the background, and I'll run the other. Pick a code to jump on to. And we'll just give you a minute to do that. Have we got people logging on, Jeremy? Always good to know. Down in the left-hand corner. Yeah, we've got some people logging on. And so I'll leave those codes up for just a little bit longer. So go to nearpod.com, join the lesson, type one of those codes in. It will ask you to put your name in. And then we, that's going to kind of transport us into the interactive activities. You're still going to see a PowerPoint. There's going to be other things going on as well. OK, so I'm just going to stop sharing and just get my Nearpod up as well. Just see if we've got people joining. Yes, we have. Um, and what I'm going to do is what I would do normally in the classroom is I'm going to drop the link also into the chat to you all. So if you haven't already joined, um, you could click that link that's now in the chat to everybody and come and join that way. Hopefully that's all given you enough opportunity to join. How many people have you got, Jeremy? Okay, good. And I've got lots of people on here. I haven't really got everybody that's um, on the session. So find that link in the chat and click on there. You will be able to see what's going on on my screen as well, but it's much better if you join Nearpod um, because then you can take part. If you're just looking at my screen, you won't be able to take part. Okay. Just giving you 30 more seconds. I've lost. Okay, right, I will start sharing my screen as well for those that have not logged on. Okay, so the first activity we're gonna have a look at is one that we did do with those uh, managers um, on Wednesday and maybe a really apt one um, for the conference as we're coming towards the end of the conference today. You're gonna see a picture of just a blank face and using the drawing tools in there. This is one we do as icebreakers on courses or whatever we might be doing. And you're gonna draw a picture of you and how you are feeling today. So all of those little faces will be coming up on your screen. You will have one for yourself, which you can see. And um, there's a little button that says instructions. You want to click on that so it disappears. Then you'll be able to see the whole face. If you're having problems with your tech, just refresh your page on Nearpods and it will be absolutely fine. And get drawing. You're not going to have half an hour to do your piece of artwork. So get drawing and draw how you're feeling today. Or you can draw a funny face or a caricature. Have a little go. And then we will share some of them so everybody can see them as well. So we've got lots of drawing going on. If you're not joined Nearpod, you will be able to see what's going on from my prevent presenter um, presenter mode. 
Um, we've got Ellie is going for it. She's drawing all her hair in. We've got some smiles. That's good. That's what we want at conference. I know we can't all be together, um, but we can still have fun. Oh, everybody's going for it now with the drawings. No holding back. This is when you find out who the artists are in the room. This always makes me laugh because I'm absolutely rubbish at drawing, but I love these activities where you get people to draw. Um, so we just give you a little bit longer so that you can finish your piece of artwork. When you think you're finished, just click the submit button. If you don't do that, then I can't properly see your picture and I can't share it with the rest of the audience. So once you're done, click the submit button. I'm going to give you one minute, OK? You've got one minute left. Chris Bateman, I have no idea what you're drawing. It looks nothing like you, but keep going. So always important that you give people sort of a reasonable amount of time to take part in the activities. Chris has handed his in already. Don't forget to hit that submit button so that we can see them this end and we're going to share um, some of maybe the best and the worst. We'll share some of them with you all um, so you can see each other's because if you're looking at just your screen, you can only see your one at the moment. You've got about 10 seconds left, so start hitting submit, even if you're not quite finished, so we can share them all. It's worrying that somebody's put one of them asleep. I hope that's not due to me. Would it be the first time someone's fallen asleep on something I'm doing? Or the last, probably. <laughs> Kelly, stop laughing. Okay, you've got five seconds left. Four, three, two, one. Everybody hit submit on their drawings. And let's have a look at some of them. Jeremy, you're going to push some out on your end of the screen. Here's one from Tim, which I think is one of our brilliant tutors, Tim Long. That does look, if that is Tim Long, it does look like Tim Long, if you can see that your end. Um, so great one there. Chris, Chris Bateman, um, I always say is our best SDA tutor. Sorry, everybody else, but it's my opinion and I'm allowed to share it. That does not look like Chris Bateman. It looks like a monk. Maybe he's changed. He's changing professions. Tim saying he didn't know he was that artistic. I know, it's surprising. The things that you find. Ellie, who I believe is one of our probationary tutors, Ellie needs coffee and wine for later. Well, when is it too, too early to start drinking at STA conference? Four o'clock? But before Mike comes on? Um, so there's Ellie's one. Great drawing there from you, Ellie. Let me have a little scroll down. Um, Jeremy, you sharing some? Who have you shared your end? Okay, excellent. Um, I'm going to have to share Anna's because she says she's asleep. Um, I will ask for feedback at the end of the session. Hopefully this isn't the feedback right now that Anna's not really enjoying this. Um, Sarah, I saw Sarah. I don't think I know Sarah, but I saw Sarah earlier um, on, with her camera on. And this is quite a good drawing. Um, so well done, Sarah. So you're generally all looking pretty happy. Now, when we do these on courses or staff training, um, this can really help you. So especially on trainings. If you're running a swim school, it's a really good start activity. They get a little bit nervous about doing it. Um, oh, Anna's saying she's tired because it's the end of half term. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, they get a little bit nervous about doing it, but once they get into it, they do. And you can, and I've had it, especially if you're like four days into a course, you get a lot of them sharing that they're tired, they're not feeling very happy today, they're stressed. It tells you quite a lot as the swim school owner, as the manager, um, whatever your role might be, you don't need to share them all with everybody, but it might just give you that indication of, OK, I need to I need to have a chat with that person. You will be very surprised. Just share Kelly's because Kelly's managed to use the um, typing tool as well. She'd like chocolate. Um, I think that's her two little people at home. And um, it just means that, you know, I've had learners that have shared things. They do share more sometimes with the drawing than telling you. So it can be a really good tool with whichever type of people you're managing, whether it be on a course or not. OK, so next activity coming up is a really simple poll. And I'd like to know, who are you? I mean, who are you? You need to say it like that. You have to say, who are you? So all you're going to do is vote on the poll that's coming up. You can vote. I've activated it that you can vote for more than one. So are you a swimming teacher? Are you a school teacher? Are you an open water coach? Are you one of the SEA tutors? Um, if you're an uh, if you're an other 
that's fine. Maybe hit the chat and tell me what your other is. Are you a swim school manager? Are you an operator? I'm going to start this activity. You've only got two minutes to answer. So get voting away. Um, here it comes now. Click the ones that apply to you. Who are you? And then we will see who we've got online today. So if you're looking through my screen and you can always click back to it, you can see what I can see as a teacher, which is whether people are taking part, what they're voting for. We've got lots coming in now. Chris Bateman has gone for his everything. He is, so that's fine. Um, who are you? Vote away. And then we will see who we've got online with us this afternoon. The timers work really well. It's good to have a timer so everyone knows. I quite often don't use the timers also because if an activity is going quite well, if I want to spend a bit more time on it, I don't want to be constrained by the timer. So things to bear in mind. Let's have a little check of that timer, see how long you've got left. You've still got a minute left. So keep voting. Click all the ones that apply. And if you've clicked other, please do tell us. El Ellen, that's Ellie. Ellie has said she's also a badger. Good, excellent. This is the um, this is the mood in the room. I like that. Also a badger. Yeah, if you click other, then please do tell us in the chat what you are. Helen says she's also a unicorn. Excellent. Anybody else? Anything else? Mystical or animal? Anna says I'm also a mum of two. That's why you're tired. I've got four at home, Anna, and I'm very tired. <laughs> <laughs> and I haven't even seen them a week. <laughs> yes, others a good one. It opens it up to more discussion. You've still got 20 seconds left and then this activity will automatically end and we will share those results so you can see. We've got people voting your end, Jeremy, as well. Good stuff. Let's look in the chat. Karen's saying she's also an aquafit instructor. Sorry, Karen, I missed that one out. Colin says he's an ex-school teacher. Dinosaur. Oh, OK, you're a dinosaur. OK, I get what you're saying, Colin. Yeah, you're also a dinosaur. I'm sure you're not, Colin. I'm actually like 65 and I look kind of OK for my age. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. OK, let's see. We've got no time. So we've run out of time. I'm just going to push that out to you guys. Those are the results. I was just interested to know who was online. Um, and it's good to know as well when I'm doing trainings. Who have I got joining me? I'm not always going to know everybody. Um, you can, of course, set this poll up to be anything you like. Um, you can ask any question. And our next one coming up is a collaborative board. It's a sticky note. When I'm in classrooms, this would be getting my post-it notes out um, and asking them to write stuff on post-it notes and pin them on the wall, pin them on a flip chart paper. And of course, the technology gives us the ability to do the same thing with the collaborative board. Um, so we're going to do that. Karen uh, Kelly's saying she's a probationary tutor, an aquafit instructor, an aquaphobics instructor. She's got everything going on, Kelly. So on the collaborative board, what I'm asking you is where are you from so which country are you from where are you based if you're in the UK tell us the town and um, I know we've got some people on here because I recognize names we've got some people from around the world so on the collaborative board all you do is type in and click post and you will be able to see what you've written and what other people have written as well so it's just that post-it note activity OK, David's saying he's in Wiltshire. David from Neptune Aquatics. Good. And he's just outside Bath. We've got Chris in Farnborough. Chris in South Wales. Very Pacific there, Chris, not just Wales, South Wales. That's where I'm going on holiday as soon as this finished, finishes. I should have left at nine o'clock this morning. But I've somehow convinced the children that it was better to stay and me take part in the conference um, and leave later uh, for our four-hour drive. VJ in India. India for now because she's always all over the place, VJ, if she's allowed to travel. Sarah's in Whitney Bay. Kelly's in Mars. I don't believe that for a second. Have you got any interesting ones, Jeremy? Yeah, I'm fine. Oh, we've got people in Scotland. Good. Good, excellent. And we've got David in Scotland. Ah, oh, David Sherman, Mr. Turtle Packs, marketing manager, director. Have you had a promotion yet? Thank you, Mr. Turtle Pack, for joining us. Um, Helen and Bognor Regis. Excellent. So again, you can use this for all sorts of um, activities. But I was just interested to know where you are in the world. OK, so moving on, I'd like you to think about what do you think the benefits are of online learning? 
Okay, so there's going to be, be some come up in front of you. It's another draw it activity. So all you have to do is grab a pen and I'd like you to circle up to three that you think are the top benefits. You might only be able to pick out one. So you grab the pen and just circle away on the draw it tool. So it's a different way of using drawing activities. OK, so here that comes. So you get your own personalised one to use in front of you. Grab a pen. You can change the colour and circle up to three um, of like the top benefits, let's say, um, for online learning. Again, sometimes with the Draw It tool, you just have to refresh your page if you can't see what you're doing. And don't forget, you've got that tab that says instructions. You want to click that so it disappears and you can see the whole thing. So we've got people circling away. So this can be used in lots of different ways. Um, I've used it sort of like identify the teaching points for front paddle arms, circle them, can use it for feedback. Um, lots of things you can do. So I'm not going to give you very long to do this to get circling and then click the submit button. If you're looking at my screen again, you can see that I'm having a look and I can see what everyone's doing. Gives you an indication. Does everyone understand? Um, have they finished? So go ahead and click the submit button. Um, and I'll just push out David's one here. David from Turtle Pack, he's saying it's cost effective, interaction using the games and the flexibility. I will post Emma, thank you for joining us. I know you're a bit late, Emma. I'm just dropping the link to the Nearpod in the chat for you. So just click on there and you can come and join us. Um, Emma um, and take part. No worries, Emma, anytime. Okay, so benefits of online learning. I've put some of them up there. So these are my main benefits that I found over the year. Now, I, I'll be completely honest with you. If online learning hadn't have worked, and I'm very much about the learner, whoever that might be, maybe that's a member of your team, maybe it's someone on a qualification, it doesn't matter. They're the learner, they're the person coming to learn something from you. If it didn't benefit them and if they didn't find it useful and if they didn't like it and actually if it put them at a disadvantage, I wouldn't have carried on doing this. But what I have found is, is that online learning can equal face to face learning. And in some respects, and here's my unpopular opinion for the day, controversial one, in some respects, it can be better than being in a classroom. OK, there's too much for me to unpick and go into there this afternoon for you. But these are my top six benefits. So things that I have found and these all come from those learners, what they have said, what they fed back, as well as us being able to see is the learning taking place. So they feel comfortable in their own learning environment. Now, there could be disadvantages, distractions, et cetera, et cetera. I leave things really open when I'm doing staff training. Like we know that you might get distractions. We might know the children might walk in. The Amazon man might ring the doorbell. That's all fine. You might not have a room you can completely shut your way away from. But if as the tutor, if as the swim school owner, you keep that nice and open and relaxed, then people feel relaxed within that. They worry about their internet cutting out. And again, just put them at ease. But it's fine. If you end up dropping off, just come and rejoin. OK, if you get disturbed by the kids, get them to come and say hello. But they do like learning in their own environment where they can control some real fundamentals in learning for us. So the temperature is a big one. Refreshments they can access and toilets and they can do that all. And they are in control of it. They feel generally more comfortable and safer and I'm not just talking about COVID they feel more comfortable and safer and more in control in their own learning environment in home for some learners they have told me I wouldn't have come on this course Lynn if it had been face to face because I get so nervous in front of people all right so there's that bit cost effective and what we mean by that is if they're doing their online learning for something like a qualification suddenly they're not having to travel every day then the flip side is, have they got access to the technology to actually be able to take part? Are you being flexible enough with how they join? Can they just do it off of a mobile phone, for example? 
And I found myself become more and more flexible as long as we're meeting the needs, as long as we're hitting what, for example, the qualification, the STA say we have to abide by. That cutting out the travel is not just cost effective, it is time effective. And no one has enough time now, ever. No one ever has enough time. It's the one thing we, we wish we had more of. They can just log on. They can join. They don't have to travel to you two hours, which links into number three, which is access to the global knowledge. They can access the expertise, the tutor, the swim school um, at a push of a button if they have that ability to, meaning they're able to go and use VJ's um, expertise in India without having to go to India. Yeah, something that might have been a barrier before. There's the interaction using the games and activities and David saying, I've never done an online webinar like this before and it's interactive. Um, Tim's saying some roll out of bed in their PJs and are ready to go. Yeah, sometimes the tutor does as well. I've done many, of course, with my pyjamas on on the bottom and a nice top on top. <laughs> yeah. So, yes, they do literally roll out of bed. Flexibility. So what we're finding is, is that tutors and staff training that have been a lot more flexible now. This isn't just because of the online learning, but it does help that, you know, people want to learn in the evenings. People want to learn in the days. They want to learn at the weekends. And for the tutors and for the learners, whoever they might be, it does make it more flexible because it makes it easier um, and the, that better opportunity. Yeah, and David saying, as a tutor, he runs a lot in the evenings working around people's current job. And I don't know about David, but absolutely the same for me. And we didn't used to do that before. Um, COVID we really didn't we were very much with the qualifications it's a five-day qualification we do five days from 10 till 7 or whatever it might be we're a lot more flexible um, and that's how to get people so what swim schools that are embracing um, online learning are finding they're getting back better access to people wanting to come on qualifications we've got a huge deficit in workforce across the country for swimming teachers at the moment and lifeguards so if we want to find these people we need to work around them because we had a shortage of swimming teachers for example before covid and now it is you know it is really bad it is quite horrific how short it is so we've got to become more flexible and online um learning um helps david again is saying in the chat that his last three award courses have been full and he believes that is the result of doing the evenings and the online learning so you know that's straight from people on the ground mm -hmm. so here's a little activity i'm going to show you going to run through a load of activities now that's why we do it okay let's have some fun let's do some more activities so these are activities that i've pulled straight from training that we've done we've got quite a few people logging on now at half past three so i'm just going to drop the link if you've just joined um you want to come and join nearpod the link is in the chat just click on there pop your name in and you will catch up with us and you'll be able to take part in the interactive activities so this first one is our final draw it activity it's faults and corrections coming up is a picture straight from the qualification um, of a man swimming on his back and using the draw it tool you can um, circle the faults maybe you'd like to do the faults what's wrong there's quite a few things wrong in red. Um, maybe you like to do what's good in green. There is a text function in the drawer as well. So you can grab that text and you can type in like Kelly did. So have a go at this one. This is the last drawer at one we're going to do. And then we're going to move on to some other things. So something straight from one of the qualifications from the STA award I use this on. Um, picture of this man swimming on his back. What's good? What's bad about this? What are the faults and corrections? Go crazy with the draw it tool. Just have a go. You're not being tested. <laughs> We're not going to take your qualification away from you if you're a swimming teacher qualification. Just have a go at this one. Um, Tim's straight off yet, yeah, Ellie, and circling things. Can you use the type in tool in there as well? So you can type in some, how would you correct it? What, what practices could you use to correct this man's rather iffy back paddle? Um, have a go. David, I'm impressed because David from Turtle Pack, I'm absolutely, um, I'm obsessed with the fact that I'm going to train you to be a swimming teacher. It's wrong that you're not a swimming teacher. So David, this is a good start for you to see if you can identify the faults and corrections. Any of the tutors on here, I hope you're getting these right. Just checking what Mr. Bateman's doing. Um, good. Yeah. And Tim's typing in now as well. 
got lots going on on there have a go really simple activity um and you know these are activity ideas if you are a tutor online you can use but think about how you could use it um if you're um, a swim school manager um i quite find if you have problems with um, standardization when it comes for badge assessments something like this could be really good or showing a video online as well what badge would you give this child and then they can all have a go at telling you what they would do and you could tell them what the answer is and then you can drill down into it it's a really good activity to do for staff tra training David's saying that he's just copying everyone else okay that happens even online so click submit button um, submit them for me and um, we will have a little look at a couple of them. Sarah's just gone with circles, circling some faults there with this back paddle. Um, let me find someone that's done some typing. Have you got some to share as well, uh, Jeremy? Yeah. Um, Kelly here, she's typed in flat feet, encouraged long legs and pointed feet, pointed toes, yeah. Head too high with the ears. Need to look up the ceiling. Good. This is exactly what you get from the learners of whatever activity you're going to do. It gives them the opportunity. And in a classroom, we might do this with some pictures and with some flip chart paper. So that's excellent. Really good. And uh, lots of correct answers as well, which is always helpful. OK, so next one. This is the most popular activity that I ever do to the point that if I do not put a whack-a-mole activity in, I have had near riots on courses and staff training. OK, because whack-a-mole is the most popular activity. So coming up is one of the ones that I use the most and I call it PSOP whack-a-mole. So pool safety operating procedure whack-a-mole. All you're going to do is the moles are going to pop up and they're holding cards that either say um, topics from the NOP, the normal operating plan, or topics from the EAP, the emergency action plan. And you're going to whack the moles, hit the moles, which show the EAP topics. So anything that would be an emergency. All right. So I will click and Jeremy will click next button. This actually takes you to a different system called WordWall. Just click on that link, type your name in and start playing whack-a-mole. If you've got your sound up, there's some quite cool, funky music. The moles make funny noises. And I'm just watching the time because if I don't give you a good couple of minutes to play this, then I know everyone's going to kick off. So start whacking those moles. And I will play this end so that anyone that's not joined us and might now be regretting that, um, can see how whack a mop works. If you are joining on the catch up or you haven't joined via the links this afternoon, um, and I will drop that into the chat again because we've had more people come on and join. So I will drop the Nearpods link in the chat. So if you've just joined, come and join us and you can play whack a mop. But if you're joining on the catch up, you obviously are not able to play these activities, but if you get in contact with me, use Facebook, use LinkedIn. If you've got my email address, send me an email. I will set this up so that you can go on and play it outside um, of this live session. So just get in contact with me somehow and I will send it all of this to you so you can play still so that you don't miss out. You should have come and joined us live, but, you know, I won't let you miss out. So if you're watching through my screen, you can see me hitting the moles. It gets harder as you go up the levels. Um, I do wholly believe that having joined Circo Leisure and they've never really done anything like this, I believe that whack-a-mole was what turned the tide at Circo Leisure of why I was allowed to keep my job um, because they loved it so much that people started coming on the CPD. We just rolled out a CPD on safety essentials um, and that went down so well that the senior management team told everybody they had to come on it. And we had people from Circo Leisure um, all across the UK and, and the um, offshore sites as well um, come on multiple days to do the same training. And I'm sure it was because of whack-a-mole. They just kept coming back. My husband, who is sat in the room and helping with tech support, um, because we've got so many of you, he believes that five minutes of whack a mole a day is good for your mental health. Doesn't matter, just, you know, just whack some moles. 
So you've got one minute left. Oh, there's an extra time thing there. And really system, easy system to use. If you're setting this up, this is done through WordWall. Um, there is a free edition. All of these things I'm using, you can get for free. And then there's paid editions as well. Um, you just type in your topics, which are the correct answers, which are the wrong answers, and the system makes the game for you within a matter of minutes. Okay, so that's whack-a-mole. Okay, right, so we're going to move on from whack-a-mole. So everyone come back to Nearpod, and maybe you'd like to just hit the chat and let us know what level did you get up to? What level did you get up to in the chat? Type that into the chat for me. Well done, Tim. Seven for Tim, six for Kelly. Anybody managed to beat seven? Ellie got seven, five, four. Oh, it's going down. I mean, I only got to level three, so. Good, excellent. Some good scores coming in there for Whack-A-Mole. OK, next activity is matching pairs. Really simple. Used to do it in the classroom. Now I have the system to do it online where you have cards and you match the things up. OK, it's as simple as that. So this one is to match the STA qualifications. So half of the cards have got a picture on and the other half say a qualification from the STA so the mermaid qualification or the open water and you've got to match the pictures to the qualification and we will see who can match them the quickest because I can track it my end now this was the thing where I saw our managing director at Circle Leisure get extremely competitive and almost angry when he was beaten by someone else in the room of matching. I can't remember what we were matching up. Oh, I know they were numbers to do with um, the business, to do with the business, like how many swimmers we had, how much money we were going to make on this, that and the other. OK, so here we go. Three, two, one. Here come the matching pairs. Depending on the system you're using, it might be a click and a click. It might be a drag. Have a go. If you've just joined, because we're getting people join all the time, I would drop the link in the chat again so you can still come and join us. And um, Mr. Chris Bateman is off and away. Are they off and away, Jeremy, on yours? Nope. Yeah, they're off and away. We've got people matching them up. Do you know your STA qualifications? Have you got all your STA qualifications? Is there one you would like doing? There's not to do. There's not one of these qualifications that we don't deliver online now. So all of the qualifications there's an element that can be delivered online all of our um, I train the tutors along with a number of other the train the tutors and we deliver that tutor training completely online which I believe is really valuable because the easier part is delivering in the classroom I would say to you so they are learning online and learning all these things and watching them when they come to me on day one and they just share a PowerPoint and then I teach them how to use all these things and what they deliver on day at the end of it. OK, Tim, Ellie, Chris have all managed to do seven out of seven. Has as David, has as Helen, Anna's finished, Kelly's finished, Colin, the dinosaur is not far off. Um, Emma's finished. Everyone's taking parts. Excellent. Have we got people fit who finished first for you, Jeremy? Cal. Who was that? Cal? Yeah. Cal finished first on Jeremy's one. You don't always need to hang around to wait for everybody. This can also be used as sort of an assessment tool. Do your staff understand this? If not, do I need to pick this up with certain people? Um, give them a chance. Give them a time to do it. And then at some point you can just move on. OK, sometimes people really struggle and that's absolutely fine. Um, so I'm just going to give you five more seconds and then we're going to move on to the next activity. So really simple activity and again can be used in the classroom um, and was used in the classroom beforehand. You're nearly there, Sarah. You've got one minute more to match, Sarah and Gary. Can you do it before I move on? Yes. Well done. Excellent. I think we've almost got a clean sweep there of pretty much everyone has managed to match those pairs. So very well done. 
And the next activity, now this one's going to test you and swim school owners, I want you to learn from this. Do you know your legislation? Okay, this activity we've done recently at Circo Leisure and staff training um, just to highlight to our swim leads, our swim coordinators in effect and our managers that are they aware of the legislation out there? And almost just of a tool to say, well, if you couldn't do this or you've not heard of these things, we need you to go and look at them. We need you to read up on them so this is a drag and drop it's using word wall again um and um yeah head officer room yeah and um you are going to drag and drop see if you can match up the description of the legislation with its title all right um here we go so again it's on word wall you just click on that link and to your name and drag and drop those titles to the descriptions. Now, I won't talk through this one, and it's really important whether you're doing staff training and qualifications that you recognise when you mustn't talk, especially when they've got reading to do. So you've got about a minute to have a go at that game. Um, I will have a go this end because some people are going to be having a look at my screen. Can I do it without reading them? Oh no, I'm so rubbish. Look, do it on purpose. <laughs> Got more wrong. I was panicking. I was panicking. <laughs> Head office are sending me kind reminders of time because they know that I'm absolutely infamous for running over, which is normally not a problem. But I can't keep you from Mr. Mike Goody, and I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I'm going to. I got them all wrong. I know, Emma. I did it on purpose. That's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. OK, you've got 10 more seconds left to have a go at that. Then we're going to move on. Oh, Emma's saying she got them all wrong as well. Emma, you need to go and go and read up or spend a bit of time, a bit more time doing that activity. OK. And here's pretty much our last activity. So this is fill in the blanks. Now, I was never a big fan of this activity. And it was a bit silly me because I wasn't actually listening to what the learners were saying. And what I found of this activity is learners love this one. Really simple. You pull out a paragraph or sentence or something that you've taught them about. You remove odd words and they have to fill in the blanks. Don't forget with all these activities, you can bump them out into a breakout room and they can do it in pairs and work together. So here is just a couple of sentences and I think I've just pulled out five words. My top tip if you're ever going to do a fill in the blanks uh, either online or in the classroom is don't make it too wordy and don't have too many words you remove. Have a go and see if you can fill in the blanks and this is to do with online learning. So again don't talk through ones where they have to read. Don't worry Ellie we are playing time to climb before we finish. I'm not going to let you down. So fill in the blanks. And if you're not um, taking part in the activities, you'll see on my screen, I'm sharing that now, where the words go and how that works. And David, again, proving to me why he needs to um, come on a qualification. Getting them all correct. Good, I think we're pretty much there. I'll give you 10 more seconds. Just let some more people in. Got people joining for the last 10 minutes. I've got to get 
Okay. Which leads us on to what Ellie thinks is the best activity. This is the second learner's um, second favourite. Um, and it's called Time to Climb. It's Nearpod's own quiz where you race up a hill answering questions and you're going to get points for um, speed and accuracy. Again, people really do love Time to Climb. You get to pick your own characters play. Um, and I think we're going to go with a Halloween edition today because at certain times of the year, Nearpod make special ones for Valentine's Day and Halloween. So there's a Halloween edition of Time to Climb coming up and you're going to answer questions. It's multiple choice and we will see who is going to be the Time to Climb champion. Now, this is a special edition. It's five questions and it's on anything to do with the STA virtual conference today. So it's all on things. Have you been paying attention during today's conference? So first thing you all need to do is pick a character. Um, it will just take a second to load up, especially with the numbers that we've got online. Have a look through. We're going to go for, I think, are you going to do Halloween as well, Jeremy? We're going to do Halloween. There's space, there's underwater in Himalaya, but we're going to go for Halloween. So I will just select that. Pick your character and come and join us at the bottom of the mountain. Here comes, who's a pumpkin? VJ's a pumpkin, Emma's a pumpkin. I quite like this, this is a good phrase, says it. Sarah, you're a pumpkin. Ellie, you're a zombie by the looks of things. Kelly's a wicked witch. David's a, what is that? Like, there's a lot of monsters. Okay, we'll just give you a second to join. Got 12 of you here, you've got people joining Jeremy as well. The only reason why we're running on two sessions is we found that when you've got huge numbers over quite often over 100, um, it can be a little bit slow, which is why we've run on two sessions. Um, I've run it very successfully with under that on just one session. So you don't need a Jeremy in the room. You're OK. I don't want to put you off. OK, you've got five more seconds to join. If you've not come to join Time to Climb or you're going to miss out on Time to Climb. Heather, if you've just joined, um, I know you've just jump, jumped in and anyone else that's just jumped in, you can watch this back on Catch Up. And if you contact me, find me on social media, um, send me an email, get in contact with me somehow. Um, I will send you a link so that you can play all the games away from the live session. So you've not missed out on some of the early things. OK, let's do it. Let's pay. Time to climb. You might want to turn your sound up your end. Um, because it's got good sound and we are going to do these five questions fingers at the ready for time to climb this is when I think that I'm like my ex-husband and a football commentator going to full commentary mode based on my training question number one who is the new president of the SDA pick from one of those four who's new president of the SDA it's not me believe it or not but who is it pick the person that it is Good. And straight away in the lead on mine, we've got Tim. Who's in the lead on yours, Jeremy? How again? OK. Oh, no. What have I done? I pressed the wrong button. And I've taken time to climb away. <laughs> I've lost it in the last bit. There's too much going on. We're going to have to start again. Go back, Jeremy. I, I do know what I'm doing, honestly. We'll just start again. Everyone come and join Time to Climb. It's because so many people are joining them for the last six minutes that I panicked and I pressed the wrong button. I'm so sorry, everybody. Um, if you've just joined, jump on the link in the chat that I'm about to drop in and you've just joined at the best time to play Time to Climb. There's a link in the chat. Click on that. Put your name in. Click a character really quickly. And we're going to play Time to Climb. You all know the first question now. So no excuses for everybody getting it correct. And it's just going to be who's the fastest. I'll give you 10 more seconds to join Time to Climb. And I will make sure I don't press the wrong button. Emma saying she's in shock. She had no idea the president has changed. I know, news, hot news off the shelf. I'm not going to say who it is, just in case you just joined. OK, well, you've got people, Jeremy. You've, you've finished. OK, you're on. You didn't click the wrong button. 
Okay, okay, here we go. We have time to climb. Okay, first question, who is the new president of the STA? Answer that question. Okay, it was Ali Beckman. Question number two, you're gonna to need to be super fast because we're gonna get cut off. What is the hashtag for this conference? What's the hashtag for the STA conference? Make sure you're using it on all your social media. Is hashtag STA virtual conference. Question number three, who presented the webinar? Every swimmer is different, every stroke is different. Which of those people presented that webinar earlier on in the day? The music on this is just awesome. And that was Wayne. And question number four, which is the most popular online activity? I told you, which is the most popular online activity that people literally will riot over if you don't put it in? And it's the final question coming before I say goodbye to you. Question number five. I know some of you finished on Jeremy's one already. Who is up next? At the conference? This is my link to leave. Who's up next at the SEA conference? And the next person up at the STA conference is Mike Goody, who's going to be saying goodbye to you. Make sure you go and check that out. David is the winner. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you've had lots of fun. These people on the screen all deliver STA um, staff training, online qualifications. So check them out because they are brilliant people in the industry. Enjoy the rest of your conference. And I will hopefully see you face to face next year. Thanks, Ray.